Now, welcome back to the channel, everyone. And today we're going to do something. I'm going to say a little bit different, but it's not really that much different, but it is a little bit. And if you want some expert tactical analysis on a certain method or a certain bait or whatever, you're probably not going to get it on this video. However, I was chatting to someone in the uh, car park at Shadesby Valley last week, and uh, great chat. And we were chatting about fishing videos because he watches all the videos that everyone puts on. And um, one of his criticisms was like the edited lens, if you like, of a fishing video, you often don't see the, the meat of what, in his words, he wanted to see. So like the decisions that you make throughout the match, and I know live matches are very good at this, um, but he wanted even more detail. So why am I suddenly switching from feeding five pellets to, to 10? Or why am I suddenly big potting my edge? Or why am I changing depth? So I thought what I'd do, I'd do that very much thing. And we've come to Barbie Banks today, and I'm just gonna let the, this is gonna be quite a long video, but what I, what I thought, if we do like an hour fishing, um, the only time I'm gonna break is either to change batteries on the camera, which is likely to happen, or I'll probably fish in the edge a bit later. I might have to readjust the cameras. Um, I've got a lovely bridge there. It'd be a shame to, to, to waste it for that situation to get my camera set up there. Um, but I, I'm hopefully not going to cut anything here. Like I say, I might have to just because the cameras might die and I'm going to probably have to keep checking my microphone still working. But that's the goal and I'm going to just talk you through. I've not had a go yet. Uh, I've got a GoPro on the other bank so hopefully you can see um, a little bit what's going on because I'll be loose feeding a little bit. Uh, and it should be a nice little... Nice little video. So hopefully you'll see the, my thought process as I'm fishing. Um, like I say, we're not looking at a particular method. We're not looking at anything like that. And my roller keeps rolling up like that. There we go. Um, we're just going to sort of work at it together. Um, bait choice is very simple. I've got some four mil hard pellets. I love fishing four mils here. Great bait. I've got some micros, which I clagged up a bit using the Go away roller, the wind's blowing it, it's annoying me. Um, I've clagged up a bit using the pro paste. Normally I'd use ground bait, but I was doing it with that the other day. And I'm gonna feed like clumps of micros in the edge using that pro paste. I think that could be quite good. You may notice they're like an orangey color. That is purely because I soaked these up for a match at Shearsby Valley. And unfortunately I had to cancel at the last minute because my kids were poorly. So I had them left over. I don't like wasting bait, so we'll use them. I've got some four mil and six mil expanders. Again, they were prepared for Shearsby Valley, but they'll be perfect for fishing down the edge. And that's it. I've got a few different six mil hook pellets and stuff like that um, that I can whip, whip on at some point. But to start with, that's annoying me that. To start with, we're just gonna go with the four mil hard pellets. A quick look at the rigs. I've set three up, primarily because the third one was already set up in my hard case. Um, but fundamentally, I'm a, it's a typical snake lake here. It's 12 meters wide. Um, I've got a lovely far bank over there, which I've already plumbed up and it's 28 inches deep. Uh, I've set up a 4x14 Cipri, which has got number nines at this end. So one, two, three, four, five, number nines, and then a couple of trimmers above it to get it shotted right. It would probably take six number nines, is the, is the honest answer. I've got a six inch 013 hook length. I might have to put 015 on. I've got green zip on which I think should be all right, but the damn lilies look quite nasty and I reckon I might have to um, upgrade to the blue at some point, but we'll worry about that when we do. And if we have to do that, we have to do it. Uh, I've got two number eight uh, stots above it as back shot. I've got a lovely, I love these pole pots, the original Preston Cad pots, beautiful pot. Uh, and like I say, it's, it's 28 inches deep. Great setup. I plumb that up just so the bottom of the body's showing. So the whole of the body of the float basically and the bristle, very nice too. Now down the edge, I'm not going to fish paste, I'm going to fish pellets. Uh, it's something I was really desperate to try at Shearsby and then obviously I couldn't go. Um, and it's fishing expanders over micros, but a bit more positively with carp in mind. So I've set up a 4x14 Fury for the edge. It is 22 inches deep in the edge, just down here. And I'm literally going to fish it, top kit and my short fall just there. It's a lovely little, it's really nice actually. There's like a little flat bit like that. But, but essentially I'm fishing on a slope, so my bait's all, I should always be fishing over a little clean bit because the bait will waft away, so it could be ideal. And I've just got a little bulk and then I've got a four inch hook length and a size 14 hook, so pretty standard stuff really. I think we should catch some fish. I just need, I just need to get me drink. I'll be right back.
Let's get these some pellets out of here. Uh, where are they? There's some lovely sixes somewhere. No, they're not them. Where are they? There they are. Nice six mils. Very nice too. Off camera probably. But that's what we're going for. We're going for raw. This is raw. I need a drink. Let's get on it. So, first things first, let's start on the Cyprian. This is exactly how I'd set off my session here. I've not fed anything over there. Uh, I've got a Catty, one of the new Preston ones actually. Bought that yesterday, 10.99. Excited to see how that has uh, worked. Actually, was working on the prototypes when I was there still. So, uh, I won't go through the plumbing up or anything because like I say, uh, we don't need to do that. I've got a four mil on there in the band. And I'm going to kick off with a full pot of pellets, fours. Uh, dip it in the water and then let's get out there and see what we can do. Now, I've, I'd love to feed just like this all along. I've got a feeling I might have to get the catty out. The catty's very good here, they love noise. We're in the middle of the day now, so it's quite hot. Um, so we'll just have to take it as it comes, really. Ooh, not going to have enough pole there to get across. So let's get on that. And what I'm going to do to start with is put my bait in first and then lower my rig over it. So I'm holding my pole out, 18, my pot about 18 inches above, and I'm just going to try and lower my bait over the top of me, my rig over the top of it. Look at that, I'm getting a line of straight. That's, look at that line of straight away. I don't like that, it's disturbed me. Let me set up. Um, and I'm just going to feed with the pot initially and see what happens. Oh, indication. Now that's common on this menu. You do get a lot of indications. So let's try and work out how we can turn that into fish. And the temptation is, of course, to... Another bite. The temptation is, of course, to get the catapult out. It is for me, anyway. I'd be, be lying if I said I wasn't already thinking, just get the catty out, Joe, and... Lash load of pellets everywhere. But I can imagine that'll probably drive them crazy. So I need to, already I'm too giddy, because you've got hard pellets on, it can be quite tempting to just strike like a madman all the time when the reality is you don't need to. I'm just I'm not happy with how that floaty sort of little bit of stuff in the water. So already I'm thinking, would I be better off with a 4x16 float here? Maybe. Um, maybe put another 11 on, perhaps. It's ever so bright today. Right, we're sat. Looks like it's calmed down a little bit. Let's see how long it takes us to catch one. It won't take long. There's a lot of fish in this peg, but they tend to be smaller from what I've been told. I did draw this peg in a match um, once. Hmm. Right, I'm going to come back and feed again. I'm going to put another number 11 trimmer on. I'm just not quite happy with how that's sitting at the moment. And I may even put a 6mm on. I ah, see. I may put a 6mm pellet on here as well. But we'll stick with the 4s for now. You may notice I haven't fed the edge yet. I say I'm a big one in with timings. Pellet looks good. Uh, I'm a big believer in timing. I don't want to feed it. I'll, I'll only feed it 10 minutes or so. Now, one thing that was annoying me was when I fed my bait, that was dangling in my eye line, the elastic. That's one downside to having that elastic hanging out. I love it because it means I can land extra fish, but just getting your eye line sometimes, and it's quite bright today. I've gone in with half a pot of pellets this time. I'm going to, again, I'm going to put them in much closer to the surface this time and try and sneak my bait in a bit more. I purposefully dropped it in from a height on that first chuck just to try and gather some fish. Um, but this time I've snuck them pellets in a little bit more. And I'm trying to be much more 
disciplined with me striking. Oh, that wind. Let's see what happens. That's sat quite nice. And we haven't hooked one yet with them pads there, so that could be interesting. And this wind doesn't want to get up any more than it is. Again, that wasn't a bite, but you can't help yourself, can you, when the float sort of dips under like that. There we go, that's off that foul up then. Right, what are we going to do here? So we're getting a lot of indications. I don't actually think I did a lot wrong that drill. So I'm going to do it again. Sometimes with hard pellet fishing, you've kind of got to go through the mill of it a little bit. Another 20 pellets. you kind of got to go through a few foul lookers and stuff before it kind of writes itself. It's a bit, they're so attracted by the hard pellets that you kind of got to go through it a little bit, through the heartache of losing a few fish. Again, I'm just gonna, it's a bit hard with that wind. I'm just gonna try and quietly tap my pellets in. Just try and get me rigging a bit quicker this time, rather than worrying too much about presenting it nice. Just try and get my pellets in. Try and get me rigging, sorry, over my pellets much quicker. Yeah, that, that, see, that was much better. I feel like that's gonna be in the mouth. And we're off, we're off the mark. Yeah. Got that wind strong. We've got the green on. I'd love to use black for this size fish, but I just worry that that lily bed there is just going to be an absolute catastrophe if I put black on. Got a 16 B911 on. 013 to start with. I like 013. 013 reflow. Right, lovely fish. So it's taken us three trucks to get one. But, there we go sort of pound and a half mirror, neatly hooked in the top lip. That was much better. So I did a much better job of being disciplined that time. I was much more disciplined with my lifting. I was much more happy to get my bait in the position quicker without worrying about lowering it in or anything like that. That's all well and good when the fishing is a bit hard. But when it's like this, and there's obviously a lot of fish there. Sometimes you just got to get your rig down, which is making me think maybe a four by 16 would be better here. And it has been in my matches recently, but the other swims have been much deeper than this. So we're not, we're not ready yet. So the wind's a bit better this chuck, so I'll be able to sneak that bait in even better. Really low. And I'll be monitoring it because as soon as I'm not getting any, any indications, I'll start putting my bait in from a bit higher just to draw some fish in again. Another indication, drop my rig straight back in. Just like lifting and dropping to start with. Not lifting and dropping my rig to get bites, but that's the aim. When you get an indication, see, look, look, there's something going on there. So lift it up, get it back in position, almost bomb it back into position. And because I've got that six inch hook length, there, are, there is going to be a little bit of a natural fall at the bottom end of the rig anyway, even if I do bomb it down. It may, may be that, oh, that looked all right that one. Maybe that I will catch shallow here today. But we'll worry about getting the cat out in a little bit. Oh, that, hmm, I'm amazed that wasn't on. You see, like this is the thing with hard pellet fishing, you do get a lot of indications. Check the microphones in a minute, so I'll try to catch another one and I'm gonna quickly jump off and box and check the mic just to make sure you can hear me. Yeah. Oh right. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a six mil pellet on, because it might just be a bit heavier, it might just stay in position a little bit longer. Stop it, Paul. That'd be annoying. Let's just try it with a six mil on. Oh, 
I've just got one of our mini bands on, new fish one. I've just got a six mil on this time. Might just be a bit more. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fill my pot right up to the brim this time. But you never know, a bigger dollop of bait might just pull the fish down a bit, bit more. They love pellets on here. Like they're very, very hungry fish on this lake, so I wanna make sure I'm feeding them and getting them down. So that's oh, once just bow waved out my peg there, I think I wanna catch them shallow here. And up against the bank. That could definitely work. Don't wanna rush into it, but that could definitely work. So look, I've put that full cad pot full in. Bit of a mugger there. If I'd have had a mugging rig up, I'd have had a little little go at him, I think. Ah. Right. So that was much better. Full pot. Full pot pellets. Six mil pellet on the hook, don't forget. So we made that change. And then we made the slight tweak to put more pellets in. That might have... Uh, might be the answer. Big pole. So like I say, once you get the green, once you get them away from the lilies, the green's not, um, you'd prefer the black, but it's one of them. Little pound fish. Even that fish then wanted to get in the, uh, into the old lilies. No, I'm much happier with that. Full pot of pellets. It's only a small pot, but it's still quite a lot of hard pellets that is. Catch another one. And once you find a little rhythm, then you've got to make the most of it. So I'm going to do it again. Full pot, six mil in the band. Once you find a little winning way, as it were, then it's important to stick at it for a little bit and make hay. So just keeping that pot nice and close. No extra noise. Indication there again, straight away. Because it's obviously it's the noise that drives them scatty. Oh, it's got a bit winded then. is gonna be naughty, isn't it? Oh, he's away. Much better though. Much, much better. Feeding that full pot full fours. Which is great, because it's nice to feed a full pot full, because it will obviously build the swim better than just feeding just a few. So I'm gonna net this one. I'm gonna quickly check the camera, make sure we're all uh, good with the mic and everything. And then we'll continue with that for a bit. Fish that. Look at him. Top lip. Calm down. Beautiful mirror. Top lip. Right, let me just double check the camera. Make sure we're recording nicely. So that's nice, isn't it? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't itching to get the catapult out. I think I'll just wait. I think I'll just wait. That six mil is a seems a nice hook bait. There's a bit more weight in the hook bait, which obviously helps. Uh, for those interested, I use four mil just fin perfects, which are like a coarse pellet. Uh, and I always oil them up. I do it in advance in large amounts. So I have like a bucket that I take everywhere, with, like if I can use obviously my own pellets. And I just let them soak in the in the oil for ages and they go much darker than they do out the packet. I just think it makes a difference personally. So let's be disciplined, keep them pellets nice and close to the top. Sun's just gone in. Can make a difference of course. 
No liners this time. Oh, little indication. If I catch one clean now, then I'm not saying we cracked it, but you see how you, I like it. And you put your bait in. Oh, Joe. You put your bait in and then have a little sit and then catch one. You don't have to worry about all the. Yeah, see that for me, so much better. It's not the fish we want though. Look at that! Like a carp, only smaller. I'll tell you what, it's a stunning little carp though. Look how dark that is. Stunning little fish. Not really what we're after. I don't, makes you wonder how he got a six mil pellet in his mouth, to be honest. I always change my hook pellet as well, like when you're fishing. Even though your pellet's still on, don't know. Something I've always been a bait changer. Even when we used to bloodworm fish and people would leave the bloodworm on for several fish, I couldn't do it. I had to change it every time and it's just something that's hardwired into me to change my bait. Mick, on the other hand, like if he caught a fish on a piece of worm, he likes to leave it on because he believes that fish found it nice the first time so another one will so so you have, you can think different but i am a firm believer in changing my pellet or hook bait and obviously the temptation with a banded pellet is to leave it on but i like to change it so i don't know what's happened here. i've just gone to lay my rigging and it's not actually settled properly let's just let's just redo that she's a shame oh there's a bit of grass on top Bit of a shame that, because my pellets went in nice. Oh, what? Now then, I was just lowering my rig in then, and a fish came bow waving out. A proper fish as well, not, not one of those little ones. There's a chance we could catch a load shallow here. Of course, this is great. We've had, what, three fish, have we? I think we've had three. Um, and this is great. Obviously, when you're in a match, weights here have been really good. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of the weight... Oh, let's see, that was a bite then, I just missed it. That's just me being bad. A lot of the weights here are caught in the edge. Um, but if you can stay in touch and make the most of that far bank, then obviously, even better. And it may be that I can attack it in a bit with a catty. But we'll stick with this for the time being. Got a little four by ten big head set up that might just work an absolute treat over that. Normally, when I'm fishing, the problem is with fishing shallow against the far bank is it's quite destructive. By that I mean you might not catch on the bottom again. So kind of got to gamble a little bit on that. Really, that was nice. He swam away from the lilies. Very sporting of him. Notice we've not fouled up one yet. She's nice. Green's actually really nice. It's not how to touch the puller, which I quite like that. As long as a, an amount comes out. It's a lovely fish. Isn't it? Funny, isn't it? This different fish, this is a, a lake that's really broken up into lots of sections. Top lip again. Oh, 10 out of 10. Um, yeah, and there's like different, different areas that hold different stamps of fish. And for some reason, this little pond here, like, Holds different stamp of fish to the rest of it, but I'm not complaining because you get plenty of bites here. I do think the six mil's better. I'd be interested to see when I make the move and go more aggressive with the catty, whether the stamp of fish improves. Because there, now my pole's not there, I can see fish bow waving around. Swines, let's just check the time. Yeah, we've got loads of time, which is good. Uh, I'm actually itching to go shallow already. I could fish in shallow in front of these pads, but I like the far bank option. Keep them pellets nice and low. I'm going to the next chut, just for your benefit, and mine. I'm going to tap them in from higher, just to show you the difference, of sneaking them and potting them from a height can make, as in 
indications and liners and whatnot. As you can see, sneaking them in is working quite nice and I'd happily, if it was in a match now, I'd be just ticking along doing this. I've got to imagine this is early in the match, early in the session. We're ticking along quite nicely. We've got four, three cap, no, four cap, and that little biddy, diddy one. Um, so we're ticking along quite nicely. Obviously, it's a match angle. I'm always thinking, how can I up the ante? And there's no doubt about it, fishing shallow is that, that thing. Yeah. Get out there, you. Oh, he was going to them lilies then, the swine. Jinxed myself, didn't I? Said I hadn't lost one yet. He was going straight to them pads. <laughs> now, you may be interested why I'm using B911s as opposed to the more modern hooks. Um, and it's something I've been chatting to a few people about recently, actually. By the modern hooks, I mean like the Teflon or PTFE ones. I really like them hooks. The GPM have served me well. And they're so sharp, aren't they, the PTFE hooks? I must admit, they do lose the point much quicker. And the B911, even though it's not as sharp out of the packet, never really changes. It doesn't go blunt. It just stays the same. So your hooks are always the same. So you never have this hook that's razor sharp out of the packet, like a PTFE one is. But it is sharp, and it never changes throughout your match, so I just prefer them. I'm really enjoying using them again. Great hooks, 911s, are obviously a nice all-round commercial pattern, up to sort of 016 line is, is nice. And uh, I'd be interested to see what you're thinking about these like modern hooks, because I don't know whether I've just been unlucky, I've had a few bad ones or what. Another little, that was another little diddy carp. I'm going to actually go straight back in here. Um, maybe I've just been unlucky, but... I really, I really am liking the B911s again. Hide and spade. Oh, I'm going to get a catty out. This is, this is great, but I don't... Oh, no, don't want to be catching them, do we? Look at that. That is not what we come for. Skimmer. And not even a big skimmer, a little diddy one. That's not what we're after. I think that last fish was one of them as well, that one that came off. Little diddy skimmer. Makes you wonder if they're some of the indications we're getting. Little baby skimmers. I'm going to combat that then, Joe. I don't really want to pot any more fours in than that full pot. Four. That's quite a lot per go, that is. Don't know how many pellets that is. 50, maybe. It's a lot in it in one go high pellet. So maybe I need to get the catty out. I'm talking myself into it, aren't I, the catty? Let me know in the comments below. Would you be on the catty by now or not? I want a catty, aren't I? Let's be honest. It's looking at me. And I've got to try it, this new catty. See, I'm being better with me lifting and dropping. I'm being much more disciplined. I forget an indication. I'm being much more disciplined. So I'm quite pleased with myself there. Oh, that was much calmer, wasn't it? Just like a little lift, like Jamie Masson back in the day. He was good at that, just lifting. I've always liked a full-blooded lift for myself. Oh, no. Thought I did everything right then. Why has that come off? Why has that come off? Am I feeding too much? Surely not. I've also got the option of going to the right of this lily pad here, but last time I drew this peg, I couldn't catch there, and this side was much more, um, much better. I've just made a little bit more noise this time. Let's see if we get a lot of liners this time. Oh, straight away, liners. Unbelievable the difference it makes. And I, I wasn't, that was only, Eight, eight or nine, ten inches above the surface. It wasn't like I was rattling them in from three foot. Like, that can be a good thing to try, actually. It's like you're not getting any indications. Try rattling your pellets in from high, and it can just pull some fish into your peg, and then you can work out how to catch them. But that can, be, can work really well. 
I am going to look, I'm just missing bites again now. So sneaking the pellets in is definitely better. Definitely. Should we get the cat out? <laughs> oh, I can't help myself, can I? Oh, oh that wind. It's flat calm here, but it's ever so windy in the straight, and sometimes it just picks my pole up, and... God. That can piss off. Don't like that. Right, it's coming out. Let's see how many pellets I can get in the water. Oh, it wasn't bad. See, this is my problem. Like just then, I could I fed one lot of pellets, and that would have been more than enough. But no, Joe has to put two lots in. Oh, now. Because I've broken that seal, the cat is in my hand now. Look, one pot, one pouch full of pellets would have been more than enough. But no, Joe has to feed two. So all of a sudden I've put 100 pellets in my peg. <laughs> Rather than sort of 40 or 50 I was feeding and sitting on it. That's just me all over, that is. Discipline, nil. Aggressive, 10, discipline, nil. Oh, liner to death now. Of course. I knew what was going to happen. But we're gambling. I'll tell you what we're doing, we're gambling. Because that was just a... It was all right, wasn't it, fishing on the bottom? But we're getting skimmers and those little cat. But we want to... We want to catch a bit better than that, really. So let's, let's gamble. Let's roll the dice, as it were, and gamble. See, they're up there already, them fish. Let me see. Can't help myself. Cat is nice. I'll say that. Very nice. That's the heavier of the two, and I've taken about an inch and a half off the elastic. I'm going to be quiet here, isn't it? Because I've deviated from the plan. I've gone from being Mr. Discipline to Mr. No Discipline. Once you decide to try and catch shallow, you, you need some like pellets sticking in the grass and stuff. You kind of want an odd carp slurping the pellets off the grass, so I kind of got to feed quite a bit just to make that sort of happen, really. Because you want those carp to sort of be grubbing around. Yeah, see, so they're coming up. It's just a case of then working out how to catch them. They're not on the bottom now, that's for sure. No indications. There's one there, just slurped some off the pad, so I think I might have already ballsed up my deep fishing. <laughs> so I'm feeding all them pellets, but in the long run, I think it'll be for the better. I might have a bit of a tough little spell now where I'm trying to build it. Um, yeah, I might have a little tough little spell now where I'm trying to get this right. And I'm, it may be that I have to come off, the, come off it and let some fish gather there with a the catapult. I'm looking at my edge thinking, I wonder if I can catch some fish down there yet. I'm not too sure, I might have to. I'm surprised how few indications I'm getting when I'm feeding, actually. I thought my, pot, my float would be all over the show. That being said, I am getting indications. None of them resulting in fish. Ah, the fish are there. They're there. Shallow. Should we go for it? Oh, read it. Let's go for it. Before we do, I'll check the camera again. 
So we've had what? Three sort of half decent carp. One baby and a skimmer. Lost one carp that um, tried to do me, but kind of just happens, I suppose. And then I've lost a little skimmer, so we're not doing bad. We've not fed that edge yet, but it is, again, shouting at me, screaming out at me. I reckon the yellow elastic cat would be the right one for this peg. I haven't got one, so we're making do. Let's just check the, check the uh, cameras. Right, so what I'm going to do is just sort of dab it in this one against the bank. I'm going to use a white. I've got some really nice light coloured hook pellets, which my mate Sam Collett gave me. I think could be nice for this shallow fishing. I'm gonna try and there's not loads of fish there, I will say that. It's not like not like we were getting liner to death. I mean, it's not like I can't see any slurping or anything yet. But that's not to say they aren't there. It's got quite a long rig just so we can experiment. And what I'm going to do is, because slapping is an absolute nightmare against far banks, I've just going to sort of, that's my slap, instead of turning my rig over, I'm just going to like give it in a, a bit of a plop in like that, which kind of simulates your slap, but like a gentle slap if you like. I'm just going to do that for a little bit. Because the last thing I want to do is slap my rig and get stuck in the grass. I could always slap against the pads, which could work. See, that's where the fish are. I can see them right in the back. Don't really want to fish there. <laughs> I've gone there, don't I? Yep, gone there. Why did I do that? I've got him out, though. Why did I do that? I knew I won't. <laughs> Better fish though. So maybe the answer. I'll probably want to shorten the line down a little bit to just give me a bit more control, but that went straight away. As soon as I got it near them pads, get out of there, you. That went straight away as soon as I got that away from them pads. Hmm, not a better fish. Same. In fact, everyone's been about that big, hasn't it? Two pounder. Pound and a half, two pounder. So let's just quickly shorten that rig, not by a lot, because I quite like the idea of being able to sort of flick it about a bit. I'm into that. And carp are much more lenient in terms of uh, giving you a bite you can hit than F1, so. I think that's important, but I've st but it still gives me. I don't know what's that. 18 inches above. Change that pellet. Caught a fish. Let's get on with it. Great, isn't it? Great fishing. Simple fishing as well. One thing I've noticed just straight away there is if I pitch my pellets ever so slightly in the air, they come down with a lovely plop. So that's just worth noting. So I want to catch shallow there. That's where I want to catch them. There may not be enough cover there. It may be that the fish are there, right in that back. Go on the green. The green serving us proud there. Right, so maybe gambling on the shallow fishing was the answer. And I didn't have to go right to the pads to catch this one. 
green zips look so nice. I love it. Just does everything in the summer. Like for car, like I can use it in the edge. I can use it like this shallow. I can use I can, if I'm start struggling with getting away from the the pads. I can tighten it up. Thank you very much. I can tighten it up with a puller bead. Just a great, great all-round elastic. Now the fishing's clearly very good. Right. First thing, must, must, must get your pellets back in. Stop. Because the ideal is, uh, when you're shallow fishing for carp, the ideal situation is where your pole is not in the water very often, which means that the fish can get nice and confident. So by that I mean, like, net your fish, get some feed in, get some more feed in, get some more feed in, quickly nip in and try and catch one, and then come back with a fish on straight away, that's the ultimate. The longer your pole's in the swim, the less likely you are to get a bite, I've always found. So I'm just going to do that. that. Plop that we were talking about. Oh, I fired them about 17 metres, them pellets. Quite like that, that plop's nice. I will do a bit of slapping though, because Sometimes you can be a bit too clever and cautious when fish actually do want a bit of noise. Oh, Joe, I'm not even watching. See? So I swear if I'd have just spent more time feeding I'd have probably gone over and got one straight away again. I'm just flicking that rig around. Which for those interested is a 4 by 10 big head. Which is perfect for this. I wonder if I can slap. Without getting caught up. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Granted, I can't get as tight to the grass doing that. I can give it a few slaps. Tell you, <laughs> playing with fire, getting that close to the pads, aren't I? Can't help it. See that, there's like a little patch of grass there, right at the back. I think that's the spot. If you can, hopefully you can see that on the camera. There's a little patch of grass. The one thing I've not, I have had here before, um, in the matches, is you'll catch exactly what's just happened there, like one or two fish shallow, quite quick. But then you've kind of got to come off it and go back on the bottom and take your fish on the bottom. I, I do think that's the thing here. Maybe not so much when you're pleasure fishing, but in matches certainly. I think they sort of come and go shallow, so it's important to not just get drawn into it because very easy to do that. I'd love to get some bites there. That's where I want to be getting my bites, right under the GoPro. I can get tight to the bank there. That's where I want to catch them. A meter away from the pads, so it gives me that little bit longer to get them away. So I can catch them there. Fantastic. So I feel like it's not quite ready yet, this, but it's good, it's better than what the bottom fishing was. So I am going to stick with it. So as practice what you preach, get some more pellets in. And that that I'm pleased with that one because that's where I want to catch them, right? There's like a little bit of bare bank. If I can catch them there, that's really where I want to. It's funny, isn't it? Because I'm firing 12 or so pellets in every go and only two or three going in the water, but that's fine. I can hear them rattling against my GoPro. So let's get that in there. 
quite like these pellets, make a nice little plop, so it's like a, I think they're, they're, they're a mainline pellet, but they're, they're like really, really light in colour, useless for feeding because they don't sink very fast, but for this, quite nice. Over. See if we get another one. If I can catch them there, right on that camera, that's just amazing. A plop. I love that plop. Just more civilized than slapping. It's a bit more discreet, but you can do it in a straight line, so you're not getting stuck in all the grass because if you slap against that bank it might happen straight away but it, it's only a matter of time before <laughs> what uh someone comes out and grabs your rig that's where i want to catch them just there really like that of course i can go a little bit deeper might try that in a minute I'm not getting loads of indications, it's kind of just going under out of the blue, really. Oh, that was a nice feed. No problems with the catty, the catty's very nice. As you'd expect from Preston. Plop, plop, plop. So this is... Again, what I was talking about, like maybe that there's like a sedgy thing there, might be better off feeding to that rather than the bank, especially at the minute while it's over, uh, bright sun like this. Or there's even some sedges that way that might be better for it. But we'll stick at this for a little bit. Let's just try a bit close to the pads, because no doubt. Ooh, it looks like a bit snaggy, that. You know what happens when we slap here? So I come way off the bank here. Let's see if there's any carp here. There is. Look at that. So that is a couple of metres away from the far bank. And I got one straight away. That's interesting. So I'm worried about getting right in the rattles, but quick slap next to them pads. It's got me a fish really quick. Well worth thinking about. Maybe I'm fishing, that's a better fish as well. That's more like what, what we're after. Them sort of three to, ten, three to eight pound carp are like your, your big ones here. And then, you, and then there's a lot of them smaller fish. Bit like your backup fish, as it were. Get out of there. Nice fish. Yeah, three pound of that one. Ish. Yeah, two and a half, three pound. Nice fish. And that was well off. That's the the one thing about fishing like this. The advantage that it gives you over safe fishing on the bottom is exactly that. I can. I have to start putting that in there. I think. Um, it obviously gives you that option to flick at them pads, should I need to. Keep an eye on this margin, I don't need to even worry about that yet. Full disclosure, it is um, sort of middle to late afternoon, so I would expect, even if I fished in the edge now, I would expect a few fish to be in the edge. Um, yeah, that's, I'll try it again actually. It was quite a nice little situation. Let's just slap it against them pads. Right. Ooh, bit of a recoil. That was a nice slap, it sort of bounced in. Ooh. Fish there. Yep. Yeah. Maybe I can... Eh? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, full disclosure. Had to have a break then. Uh, I've had, sorry, I didn't catch the chap's name, but 
we've had a great chat about canal fishing and all sorts so just turn the cameras off while i had that nice chat and to be honest while i've been away for half an hour or something pegs changed quite a lot shallow is coming and going mainly going i've got to be honest i've not caught a lot shallow odd bite but it's definitely and often the case here better just to just tick over on the bottom and take the fish as they come and that's what i'm doing at the minute back to the original plan really there's plenty of fish there and i am catching some better fish now which again is the norm one thing you'll have noticed that i've had to do is tighten my elastic up so i've got a good 18 inch there odd one starting to take me in the pad so we don't really want that if we can help it and i'm going to catch one more fish and i'm going to open up my margin line i'm not going to go mad i've got like a 150 pot on a 150 mil big pot on i'm just going to put one of them the micros in them stinky micros that i've got um but i've had some nice fish off camera uh, i'm not going to say i've emptied it off camera because i haven't but i've caught I've had one real nice common, like seven pound, which I, I probably got it on my GoPro to be fair, but yeah, I got one, uh, about seven pound, real nice common. And I've had a few sort of four pounders, a couple of little ones. I've had one that's destroyed me in the lily pads. Um, just took everything. Got my flight back though, luckily. Um, but yeah, so I've tightened up my elastic just to sort of stop them getting in there really. And like I say, shell has been been weird. I don't get the impression there's loads of fish there. Um, they're not coming up and like slurping on the bank or anything, which is unusual for this venue. Normally, you get a few pellets stuck in the grass and they're all over you, but they haven't been today. So I think it is better today just to take what the what the peg will give you fishing on the bottom. So I've put the catty down for now and we're back on the pot and we're trying to keep the fish on the bottom. For a little spell let's just see if we can calm them down again because they went scatty um so i'm just having a bit of a spell trying to calm them down again like i say next time i ship back i'm going to pop that edge and maybe look at having a go on that in sort of 10 minutes or so because it's that time of day now when the edge could come really good so It'd be nice to... God, that wind is horrid. It really is. Look at that. said I'm just going to pop, get the catty out. <laughs> that wind is so bad. Just picking the pole up. Which is not what we want. Get the pellets in. And I'm going to try and catch a couple down the edge to sort of end my session, really, because time is ticking. Right, I'm going to pop the edge and then I'm going to... Look at that, the wind's getting bad now. So that shows you I'm not hiding anything because getting an odd tangle. All sorts of businesses going on here and I'm not 100% sure how to resolve it, I've got to be honest. Made a bit of a mess of it, feed in with the catty, which is always the danger of doing that. Some extra pellets here. It's always the danger of getting the catty. See, there's carp over there. Look, it's in pole away. And... Let's get that in down there. Like I say, I've not gone with a massive pot full to start with. 150 mil of micros. Do I go in shallow? Or do I try and catch one on the bottom? Let's try and catch one more on the bottom. I'll be interested to see if I see any like colorations. That's the first time I put any micros in down there. Let's just see if that's how long it takes to see some signs. I've done it quite close to me, obviously. Purely because 
it's cut out nicely and the, that little ledge, I really like that little ledge. It's there. Apologies if my uh, phone's buzzing away. I'm getting liners again. So the fish are back, there's fish here again. They're not hanging themselves by any means. I thought I was going to be on then. So that tightened up green, it's just allowing me to get the fish away from the cover and then it's still got enough stretch because it is stretchy to play the fish quite nicely so I say in an ideal world you'd use black but there's no way you're getting them fish away from the pads with the black, it's a nice fish. They have got better the more we've been fishing, they've definitely got a better stamp, it's not, don't get me wrong it's not a massive fish but the more we've fed the more we've fished the average stamp has gone up. So we've had that seven pounder off camera. That's a nice one. Four pound? No, three pound. Three pound. Three pound. Again, one actually spooked as I... And I'll tell you what's happened there. There's a bit of colour down the edge. Um, there's actually some slime up the line, which I don't think was that fish. I reckon it bumped a fish as it was, as I hooked that one. Quite a common thing. One more doing that. We might just before we go down the edge, we might just go shallow for a little bit up against that bank. So we're working all the time. Like it's not just the case of going around and trying to fish shallow because if the fish aren't there, there's no point doing it. You might as well be on the bottom. one. He might have done me. Oh, got him. <laughs> Unbelievable Jeff. He wants to go back in though. Got him away. <laughs> it's the right battle that is to get them away from them pads. It's a good fish as well. It may just be like time of day thing and we're starting to catch some better fish but I do think Obviously, the more you feed a swim, the more confident they become. And if it was a match, I think I'd just be dotting and dabbing between the two, shallow and on the bottom. I think that's what I'd be doing. Catching, a bit like what I said, a bit catch one or two shallow, then go back on the bottom. I think that's what I'd do. And try not to get giddy with the bait. So just don't think there's enough cover here to get them lined up against the bank. I think you need maybe a bush or bit more reed cover. I'm saying that there's a great big bed of pads there so he's a nice fish. Yep. Yeah. He's a nice fish. That's the biggest one I've caught on camera. Not as big as that lovely mirror I caught, uh, another common I caught off camera but let's have a quick look at him. Look at that. Gear down. Lovely fish. And I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because I'm feeling positive about the situation. I want to big pot that edge again. So let's quickly do that. And I'll talk to you a bit more about what I'm going to do with the edge when I actually fish it. It looks great under there, I've got to say. It's quite deep down there. But a lot of this venue is, so it's not out of the ordinary. And you may be thinking, why aren't you fishing paste? Because, um, obviously I love paste. And it's a fair question. But just recently I've noticed that foul looking a lot of fish on my paste. And the other anglers who I know, and if someone's catching on paste, Sean Powell is an obvious one from Shearsby Valley. If he's catching and winning, I know that paste is really working. 
Uh, and he won last week when I was there, but he said he fouled 50 fish, which suggests to me that taste ain't quite right, because you shouldn't be foul looking that many. Um, and I myself found that I wasn't happy with how I caught last week. So maybe the pace is just on the back foot at the moment, for whatever reason, the water temperature or the fish are just having a bit of a lull because they can't just keep feeding all the time. Maybe baits like pellets and meat and stuff are better at the minute. So I've gone down the micros and expanders route in the edge and we'll try and work out how to do that best in a little bit when we get fishing down there. But I'm seeing signs down there, so I might commit to it in a little bit and see if we can finish this session on a, on a nice little edge bagging session. So just a few key points from over there. I've been bitten, by the way, while I've been sat here, which is annoying. My arm's like blowing up. Um, so key points, definitely sneaking that small cad pot full of four mils, definitely right. Sneak it in as, as quietly as you can. Obviously pick the catty up occasionally, but I've been guilty of it and I'm always guilty of it here. I've been too giddy with the catapult at times today, definitely. Um, and I'm always you know, that trying to up it when I should realise now that unless you've got lots of cover to hold the fish, then that's not necessarily right. And what I, what I might do while I'm fishing the edge, I might actually gamble and start spraying some pellets at that. There's like a Tina Turner over there, like a sedgy thing. Might fire some bait at that and just see if we can catch a few fish against that. These pads would be good, but obviously it's such a bloody nightmare to get the fish away from them that I just don't fancy it for like a sustained bagging spell. I just don't think you're ever winning when you're having to wrestle with them. So that's what I think I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to have a go in the edge. Hey, oh, skimmer. I think I'm going to have a go in the edge. Try and suss that out a bit. Because I don't think there's loads of fish down there, but there's definitely an odd fish coming in. And then what we'll do, we'll start pinging some pellets at that sedgy thing. And then we'll work out whether that's going to be the answer or not. But I'm just going to cut because I need to um, set my camera up in a different position for the edge. Um, yeah, and then we'll do that. We'll, we'll start firing bait at that sedge and you never know we might get a big finish either over there or in this little edge here so let's do that we'll move the cameras about I'll move my GoPro and then we'll see what we can uh, see what we can finish with right so so repositioning the cameras and I'm kind of gonna forget about that far bank a little bit so I'm just gonna raft some pellets into that grass firing them down into the grass a little bit. And I'm hoping that a few get stuck in the grass so that it'll encourage the carp to sort of come up and investigate a little bit. I've been bitten again. Jeez. That's annoying. Right, so we're coming for a big finish. So what I'm going to start on are two four mil expanders. Now this is a bait that I often use and rarely hear of anyone else using it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but for some reason, two fours is a very good hook bait in the edge, I've found, for whatever reason. And I've just got like a real stodgy sort of blob there. Now I haven't got actually long of my session left, so Maybe I won't even get a chance to use that far bank, but it's worth feeding it just in case. Now what I'm going to do is pop that there. He's getting this edge here. And actually, I think it's that distance. So top kit and me short four. And there's a lovely little sort of alcovey thing there where I can get my bait to go in. And I've just got to get me, ex me pellets right in against the bank there. There's a little shelf that my rig is sat on. And it's right, it's like, um, it's not flat, but it's a 
bit flattish and then it drops off quite nicely. It may take me a couple of feeds. I've also got the option of a six mil pellet or even two. So I've got that option as well. You notice I, there's fish down there straight away. Probably need another shot on that, I think. Now, I am expecting some silvers and stuff um, initially. But we'll worry about that in a minute. Just put another shot on. I'm not quite happy about that sitting, so we'll put a 10 on. It's two and a half mil tip on this float, so it does want to be dotted quite well. And we're just gonna work out. Certainly initially, it might be that I have to put more more bait in as well. That is obviously in the back of my mind, as in a bigger pot. But we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Nice and steady, get the bait out. Lift the rig over the top, let it come in. And we're right up against that bank, it looks great. Ooh. So, already I'm thinking I might need to shorten that lash down, in fact I'm going to do it. Because it's have such a little tuck in sort of spot that is. Tucking it right under the grass. So it may be that I have to tuck in with a tiny short lash. You never know, odd one might even hook themselves. Be nice. I'm just let's not forget that far bank. I don't actually know if I've got time to go on that far bank. But we'll work that out as and when. There's the pellets in. Quite undercut under there, which I don't mind as long as I can get right against the, the bank. And I'm already thinking, what if I put a bigger hook on and maybe put like two six mils on or something like that and a bigger pot on? I'm looking at my pots thinking I've got a medium guru on there, maybe I need more bait. There's a lot of liners. Hmm. Just feed, let's just give it a, a chance to come good. Yeah, I don't think that pot's big enough for what I'm trying to do here. So let's rectify the situation. Let's take that pot off. Let's put a medium cad on. A nice size, definitely bigger than that medium guru. Um, I've got my pellets in it. I've got some that are really claggy, and some that aren't so claggy. And I'm just gonna feed a bit round the quite so claggy ones. See there, that pot's I reckon that pot's one and a half of what I've just been feeding for those interested. A lovely little edge. If I can get it right, it could be really good. I like edges like this that sort of cut back from your fishing position because it's like gives you a bit of cover. Maybe they won't come in though. No, there we go. There we go. Don't take too long. Like loads of fish. Little fish just top then. So that changed into a bigger pot. Granted, I've fed it a few times now, so bloody hell, he's going. I've fed it a few times now, so maybe it just needed that, but just changing that ever so slightly bigger pot has got me one straight away. And I'll tell you what, it's a better fish, I think. It feels better anyway. He 
Yep. Oh yeah. Edge fish. Nice. Okay. Four pounder. Nice common. Nicely hooked. And there was no there was lots of little fish scarpered when I hooked him. But I've not had any sort of hassle really. So that was quite nice. It's a nice big bloaty six mil I've got on there. Six mil expander. Really soft and waterlogged. Let's try it again. It's important not to squeeze your pellets in too much in your pot, otherwise they just won't they'll really struggle to come out. I don't want that. I want to try and go down in a bit of a clump if I can. So nice and accurate. I see the baits out. Lift my pellets up, my rig up, and we're in. So that was good. I like that. And that shows you the difference of the edge. Obviously, means that we're uh, fishing somewhere where then bigger fish are sort of happy to come in. I'm already thinking, I wonder if I put double six on, it might get me an even quicker bite, but we'll try that again, that six mil. Really nice fishing. But obviously the edge is so important, and like on venues like this, when it can be the difference, like the fish are double in size when you're fishing in the edge as opposed to across, so. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to work out that you're going to boost your weight very quickly, even with 20 minutes in the edge or half an hour. I had a match recently on peg behind me. And I caught 42 or 43 pounds in 20 minutes. So it just shows you why you've got to get the edges right. There's one down there. There's one there. See, that's what we don't want to happen. Little fish like that, no good to anyone. That is the drawback with expander fishing. In a match, I'd be thinking, right, a big pot it again and then go over there, but I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna have one more go. I'm gonna put two six mils on. So what I do is thread one up the line and then put the second one below it. Which makes a lovely big standout bait and it's soft, so you get a great hook hold. Just put, it might be that I have to put more bait in. We don't want them roach, do we? That is not what we're after. You can just imagine them. Two pellets sat on that little slope. Fantastic way to fish. Okay, so we just had a big camera reset because uh, batteries were going left, right and centre then. Um, Quickly whiz across and catch, there's some fish over there shallow, so I don't think it'll take me long to catch a couple. Um, I'm keeping an eye on that edge. I'm not actually going to feed me across because they're sort of over there. And they're taking the bait that's settled on the bank rather than the bait that's going in, so let's just see what happens. Gone already. Amazing, isn't it? As soon as you pulled over them, that's pleasure fishing. <laughs> the beauty of obviously having some bait stuck in the grass and whatnot is obviously that. Them fish have attracted themselves. I was fishing down the edge and not even paying attention. And because there's some bait stuck in the mud and stuff, 
I don't even have to worry about it because they're always going to be hanging about. So if I do need to go back out there, I can. If my edge doesn't kick off, I've still got that to fall back on. So it's, a lot of fishing is about that. Giving, I think it's great to say, right, I'm fishing down the edge now, but at the end of the day, that across shallow could give you like a really good finish. So just keep an eye on that. It's, too often, I think we all get drawn into the edge when your far bank's just coming good. So that was really good, wasn't it? So it's just. It's interesting when I was chatting to the bailiff um, off camera, he was saying that there was an evening match last night that was really difficult. And this is a, a venue that's notorious for evening matches. Like there's some really big weights, um, and yet it was it was difficult last night. And that may be the baits that the people are fishing, or it may just be that the fish are a bit moody at the moment. And the fact that they haven't come in and are ripping the edge up was, you know, I'm the only one here. I thought they'd be a, crawling up the bank by now. It's probably a good thing though, because shows like a bit more of a true representation of fishing, I suppose. Just tapping that pellet in. I quite like that technique that Sam told me about, just dropping it in and plopping it in. But interestingly, that caught that one dead quick and then they've gone again. Which has been the theme, really. Try a bit of slapping. It's been far from easy. Good fishing. Far from easy. In it. Amazed how a few fish are about. That was great there. Bit of cover. Back in the original spot. Might have fouled that one. I think I've definitely fouled that one. Yep. Sort of laid that over his back. I got giddy. I'd put my rig in the right position. Catch one more over there, and then we're gonna try and catch one or two in that edge. That'll do us, do us nicely. Hopefully, that's been a interesting video because I've had to change a lot, a lot, a lot more than I would want to. You know, I've been dipping around shallow on the bottom. The reality is, if I'd have just kinder potted pellets against the far bank, I would have caught a fish most chucks in, I know I would. It's only through me trying to push the peg on that's made it worse, which is interesting, isn't it? I always think that's the decisions you make and maybe the boring way of just sitting over your little pot of pellets is the right way at the moment. Ah, oh, there we go. That's where we want to see them. That's where I want to see them, in that grass. Almost like, you can almost like swing your pellet in there. I'll get it stuck on the grass. Oh no. 
Yeah. Not many though. Just odd fish. I think what I'm going to do is gamble down that edge and hope that we get a big finish because it's definitely a moody day. And I've purposely not sat on a great peg, like 56 here is not a great peg. Um, but I've done that for a reason because obviously the wind was off my back. It was a nice one to sit on, not necessarily where you'd sit if you wanted a bumper day's fishing. I'll tell you what, I'm going down the edge because that is hard work over there. And if I can catch two in this edge, then that's a job well done, as far as I'm concerned. I caught that little bonus one just then, over there. Let's get back in this edge. You notice I've put my uh, rig around my top kit rather than extending the elastic out. I just think that's common sense with regards looking after your elastic. It's in the back of my mind that I'm not feeding enough pellets down there, so there's an even bigger pot that I could potentially put on. A lot more water movement straight away. I've noticed as soon as I put that rig in, the rig's moved to the side. A lot more water movement. Interesting, you might have picked it up, but you might not. I've started throwing an odd sort of 30, 40, 4 mils down there just to create a bit of noise. It's very calm down there, there's no wind. Sometimes you need a Look at that, as soon as my pole's not there, they're back in and across. Swines, aren't they? Crafty devils. Well, I'm quiet down there. Yep, you just know it. Throw some bait in. You just know that there's no ropes there because the, the movements are different, you just know. Better fish as well. Oh, he's a... If I'm a better man than me, he's the one that we end the video on. Because that is a beauty. Lovely big comment. But maybe me, I'm going to have to try and catch another one. What time is it? Home time is what it is. So that that is the end of that. We'll have a quick recap. Let's have a look. Because that is a beauty. The perfect one to end on. Calm down. Perfect one to end on. Lovely common. Seven pound-ish. Look at that. What a fish. That's the immaculate looking fish. Popping back. There you go. So, we've had a lovely little session there, a couple of hours pole fishing. We've caught a cross. I think, in hindsight, the best way would have just been plodding along on the bottom with that 4x14 rig over there, hard pellets. I would have caught a fish most goes in, of all sizes. Um, but I've tried to kick the peg on by loose feeding, trying to make, bring the fish shallow. It's worked to a degree, you've still managed to keep catching fish, but probably messed the bottom swim up. Um, there's fish over there, don't get me wrong, but they're not easy to catch. The edge, I dare say if I carried on now I'd catch several, but I do need to make a move, so I'm not going to do that. Um, and switching up to that slightly bigger pot has probably worked. I wouldn't mind putting an even bigger one on. There's a large cad, I'd probably put a large cad on. Even the paste pot, I use that quite a lot. Uh, yeah, great session. Wonderful venue, this Barbie Banks. And if you like this format, this sort of longer format video, then let me know. Um, 
And I don't profess this to be like a ta tactical masterclass or anything like that, but I've just literally come for a couple of hours pole fishing and I filmed it. So hopefully you've enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you again on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe everyone because 60 odd percent of you don't, give me a subscribe. It helps get the views, views up uh, and we'll see you again on the next video.